Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 17, Bells and Whistles. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and talented co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are we today, Michelle? I am wonderful. How are you, Joe? I am fantastic. Uh, We've got a pretty busy show today. We sure do. We're kind of all over the place. we got a lot to talk about, about a lot of different things today. Mm Mm-hmm. So, uh, in Disney Detective, we've got uh, some information on uh, the most expensive things you can buy at Galaxy's Edge, because what would a podcast be without Galaxy's Edge? Absolutely. Got to throw something in there. Uh, Then we have some uh, information on Lion King's uh, Protect the Pride campaign. We'll talk about that. And uh, we have... Captain Marvel bonus material goose edition to look at. Meow. Uh, <laughs> then in our entertainment news, uh, Robert Downey Jr. is playing Tony Stark in real life now with his effort to clean up the earth. Then we have Outlander's Katrina Balf, who's reminding us why you should not ask a woman if she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. Very important. Then we move on to some more Lucifer news, which is apparently is another popular one that keeps showing up in the <laughs> show here. Right. Uh, some information about a fifth season there, as well as some news on Tom, the uh, Lucifer star Tom Ellis's marriage, uh, his his wedding, uh, and also in Wedding Bells, uh, Damien McGinty of uh, Celtic Thunder, one of our one of our preferred. Uh, Bands uh, also got married. Mm-hmm. Then we will sum up with our insightful picks of the week and a couple of afterthoughts uh, that are more forethoughts than afterthoughts. Um, you can actually, they won't be a- occurring until after the podcast, which is. Right, which is very unusual for us because normally we talk about stuff after it's already happened. So yeah. that's that's kind of new for us. We're, we're trying a new trend <laughs> trying, here. Trying a new trend this week. So, uh, ready to get into it? Let's do it. Go for Disney Detective. So, one of, you know, obviously every day there's something new about Galaxy's Edge because it's, it's still very new. Um, they're still obviously doing the reservation system. Uh, things are still kind of very tame there there's a lot a lot of different videos coming out about making your own lightsaber and making your own droid and um this one was actually interesting because it was the nine most expensive things that you could buy at galaxy's edge and it's like no we're not even talking about the 75 dollar beer or the 42 dollar cocktail at the cantina or even the hundred dollar uh, droid that you can make or the $200 lightsaber. Nope, that's all pocket change compared to some of these other items. Um, the the cheap, <laughs> the bottom of the list is a Stormtrooper helmet starting at $400. Wow. Um, then an Imperial TIE Fighter helmet is $450. That'll set you back you know, $50 more. Uh, then they had some uh, jewelry, some uh, royalty cuffs, um, that were going for 450. There were a couple of different versions. There was a, a, a weave and then a rope kind um, that were both $450. Uh, then Poe's X-wing helmet was going for $665. Kylo Ren's helmet was going for 750. Then the next is the $200 necklace 
that is worn as a member of the House of Organa, and it's basically a replica of the necklace. It's just a pile of dust. <laughs> it's the necklace worn by Princess Leia in the the throne scene, the throne room scene at the at, end of a at new the hope. end of of a new hope. Um, then uh, the next most expensive is $6,615 for a first order stormtrooper armor full size. Wow. And then the most expensive is a $25,000 life size custom R2D2. Wow. Ironically enough, none of those things are appealing to me. <laughs> Cuz there's nothing Darth Vader. Nothing Darth Vader. Like yeah. if, if I could buy a Darth Vader helmet or a Darth oh, Vader absolutely. set of armor or something. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was kind of interesting, and you know, it it kind of makes you wonder how many of these things are actually gonna fly off the shelf, right? You know, or is it just oh, let me just look, and you know, and I'm sure that there's cheaper versions. You know, the you know, especially like with how Disney does their artwork, there's always the five thousand dollar piece and then there's the two thousand dollar and then there's the five hundred and then there's the forty dollar you know cheapo for that kind of money though i'd expect to be able to like drive off with the millennium falcon or something you know (laughs) maybe maybe you get a fast pass yeah yeah for six thousand dollars six thousand dollars you get a you know or do you at least get you know uh, an annual pass or something yeah so that was just a a quick little thing that was that was uh kind of funny and then and it just kind of you know popped up kind of funny in a sad sort of <laughs> in a way. sad sort of way that people have that much money to just oh i wanted a a full-size uh stormtrooper uh See, and i thought buying a couple of lightsabers there would have been going overboard right exactly so silly me yeah silly you um so in other disney news disney announces the lion king protect the pride ca- campaign so as we all know uh the new lion king live action movie is going to be coming out. Um, It's also the 25th anniversary of The Lion King. Um, So it's actually a global uh, conservation campaign to to raise awareness of the crisis facing lions and other wildlife across Africa. Um, So the focus is on protection and revitalization of the lion population. Uh, So Disney is lending a hand in support to the Wildlife Conservation Network's Lion Recovery Fund. Um, their vision is to double the population of lions by 2050. So obviously it's not going to happen overnight. It's right. going to take some time. Um, but hopefully um, the idea is to stop poaching and destruction of the habitats. And that's really what their main, uh, what their main focus is you know, at the start of this. Um, Disney has already donated $1.4 million to the Lion uh, Recovery Fund and plans to double that through grants and participation from fans um, for a local contribution of $3 million. Uh, The Protect the Pride effort will be the largest single contribution in the 24-year history of the Disney Conservation Fund. Uh, The fund has actually already directed 75 million dollars to save wildlife globally and that's one of the things when you go to um animal kingdom right you know they they have all over the place you know drop a dollar here drop a dollar there you know obviously they they've you don't hear about it as much but you know that they're helping to protect the wildlife it's it's i mean even what they do at animal kingdom Mm -hmm. they're they're protecting and and Mm -hmm. healing and so forth right but you look at this and they make really a big deal out of $3 million. A couple of weeks ago, what were we talking about for Bob Iger's salary? $156 million mm-hmm. and and $3 million to try and save an endangered species. Right. That's all it takes. You, you, you think they could muster a few more bucks to... Well, and I'm sure they probably... The effort in. You know, and they probably, you know, will. I'm I'm, I'm hoping, but yeah. you never know. We it can, is, can it always is, hope. It is Disney. Um, and another cute little add-on story for the Disney detective is that uh, earlier this week it was National Hug Your Cat Day. And to celebrate it, Disney and Marvel released a variety of fun images and videos, including everyone's favorite flurkin, Goose. Meow. 
<laughs> um, so they, they came out with this cute little YouTube video, which we watched. And, you know, I started watching. You're like, hey, can I watch? And then we watched it. And then, of course, halfway through it, we had to bring our daughter in right, um, right. because <laughs> we're, we're cat people. So it was just a very cute video you know of like behind the scenes stuff and and talking about goose and um the one there was another article that i read is that hoping that for captain marvel 2 goose is obviously a, a predominant yeah, you know that character would cool. that would be would be very cool um and obviously the whole reason for a lot of this coming out is that on june 11th captain marvel will be available on blu-ray so yeah. that was kind of the the tie-in for that but it was a it was a cute little video and little montage of of our favorite well it was neat because cat. they actually show some of the behind the scenes footage and and some of the discussions that they had mm -hmm. and there was initially you know a brief scene with goose and the producer said i need 200 percent more right goose. we need 200 percent more goose <laughs> so that that was that was cute i want like five thousand percent more goose but yeah Goose needs, I'm telling you, Goose, Goose needs her, Goose his needs own to be, origin story. They they need to remake the cat from outer space, yep. and that and is Goose. Goose. And Goose is the cat from outer space. That would totally work. They're remaking all the other movies now. Yep. That's a perfect opportunity. Yep, so let, let's start writing it and submit it so we can get That's our right. millions and, and retire. There you go. <laughs> I'm all for that. So that is it for Disney Detectives, my dear. Okay. So on to our entertainment news, and the first thing that we have comes to us from ABC News. Robert Downey Jr. launches a, a climate change coalition to clean up Earth within 10 years. Very Tony Stark of him. Yeah, and actually that was one of the headlines, is that it looks like Tony Stark has really rubbed off on Robert Downey Jr. Um, he announced at a uh, summit in Las Vegas that he is starting up the climate change coalition to help clean up the world using advanced technology. Um, so it, it kind of seems like a lot of what Tony Stark and all the, the buzzwords and everything that he used, he's like, well, wait a second, all of this technology exists. We have nanotechnology and we have drones and we have robots. Why aren't we using all this advanced technology that we have to help clean up the world? So it, it, it kind of makes sense. Um, so he took the stage uh, Tuesday at Amazon's uh, Remar's uh, Artificial Intelligence Conference to announce this real-life plan uh, to do just that. So he had various pictures that he had posted uh, on his Instagram and Twitter talking about the event. Um, they kind of did some uh, uh, something with, with Matt Damon, who he's very much into cleaning the environment as well. So, you know, so... Well, he did wonders on Mars, didn't he? <laughs> he totally did. <laughs> um, so they had a they had a, a fun play back and forth. Um, you know, but basically he said, between robotics and, and nanotechnology, we could have a clean planet, if not totally in 10 years, but pretty much close to it. Um, so it, it sounds like, you know, going in the right direction. You figure he doesn't have any more... You know, Avengers mo <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. I, right. I suspect you're still going to see him in the MCU, but oh, I'm sure. But you know, it's nice to to see. Yeah, it's when and and that's a thing. Like we've talked about this in the past that uh, you know Robert Downey Jr. when he took on the mantle of Tony Stark and Iron Man. Mm -hmm. His entire personality changed. And, I mean, oh, he totally. He he embraced it himself. between. You know, this and what he did for, for different children's organizations, yep. going to hospitals, you know, as Tony Stark and, and helping to, to deliver, uh, you know, prosthetic yeah. parts, you know, arms and legs, you know, for, for kids and, and, you know, helping them. It, it's it's made a difference. This is, and this is just an extension of that. And mm -hmm. as, as noble a cause... And as worthy a cause as this is, I think the first thing that you need to do is stop destroying the planet before you can try Absolutely. to fix it. Absolutely. And unfortunately, you know, we're seeing too many trends drifting in the opposite direction, especially with our current administration, mm -hmm. you know, basically pulling us out of worldwide efforts to curb pollution. Mm -hmm. 
you know, um, and until when, that's taken care of, and right. until you, until you change the trend of world leaders mm-hmm. yep. from, you know, deliberately destroying the planet, mm-hmm. all these efforts that mm-hmm. you're going to have, no matter how right. much technology you throw at, you're us, only going to fix so much so because far. they're, you know, look at Flint, Michigan. You know, for how long have they been still without clean water? Yeah, and we're, you know, the most powerful country in the world, and this is what we do, yep. you know, to our own people, you know, so. You're absolutely right. So maybe, you know, maybe that's one of the things, you know, he's he's looking at is, you know, a quick fix, a way to, you know. Well, to hopefully it'll help. Hopefully it'll help. So we also were reminded by Outlander's Katrina Balf that you should not – Ask a woman if she's pregnant. Why don't you explain that one to us? <laughs> so uh, there was a, a story that came up where um, the Outlander stars were at an event uh, with uh, and took a picture with rapper 50 Cent, who happens to be in one of the shows that's on the Stars Network. Um, and because she looked a little, you know, she was kind of standing off to the side, all these people speculated, oh, my God, you must be pregnant. Congratulations. When's, you know, when are you due? And basically she came out and said to all the people who think it's appropriate to ask, no, I am not pregnant. I'm just having my period and was bloated. So, yeah, thanks for asking. Oh, not really. Not all stomachs are washboards. And basically the article talks about how, you know, a woman's reproductive right is her own. Don't assume that just because somebody's stomach isn't flat or they have a little bit of a bump that they're pregnant. Um, and she's not the first actress that has been, you know, asked this and, and berated by it. Um, even well, that's no different than going up to somebody who may look you know, skinnier or paler mm-hmm. or, or as bald and say, oh, so how's the cancer treatment going? Right, exactly. You, know, you, just, wouldn't, you would never think to do that. And here, you know, and of course, in in this day and age and in, in the society that we're in, you know, you have so many people who who troll others and, right. you know, and, and maybe they weren't being mean. Maybe they were, you know, uh, they weren't trying to be spiteful or just, oh, look, she looks pregnant. You know, because how many, you know actresses you know are are constantly being harassed by paparazzi and because they're wearing baggy clothes one day or they look you know they're they're not made up as perfect as they should be and everybody assumes they're sick or they're pregnant and you know it's just and that's like you know if you work in an office complex and you know you have a a pregnant employee there Mm -hmm. people come up and want to touch your stomach it's like Exactly. Would you normally touch someone if right? If, would like, you just go up to any random person? Pr- right? Is that okay? Exactly. It, it it's just you know again in this day and age, use common sense. Not every person you know is that's the problem. Common sense is an uncommon virtue. Right. Exactly. So again, she's not the first you know person that it's happened to. Um, it's even happened to obviously uh, Meghan Markle and Princess Eugenia and Jennifer Aniston and basically any celebrity who either has, you know, never had a child, you know, and then it comes down to the whole, well, why haven't you gotten pregnant yet? Why aren't you? It's none of your like you're business. A, like you're a judgmental Jewish grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to have a kid? How come you haven't had a right, child I, yet? I, I dealt with that for how many years? So, you know, yeah, exactly. So it, it was just kind of, you know, fitting with all of the, uh, you know, issues that women are going through right now with, you know, having, you know, th- their body autonomy and, you know, other people deciding what to do. Body autonomy. I don't think I've ever heard that phrase before. Really? Oh. Yeah. You haven't been to Red Tent in a while. That's interesting. Oh, wait, you don't go to Red Tent. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, you know, so I'm not going to tell you what to do with your body. You're not going to tell me what to do with my body. So don't just assume, you know, unless I, I say, hey, I'm pregnant, don't just come out there and, right. you know, start. Well, and, the, and that's the other thing. Like a lot of times, you know, people who are trying to get pregnant sometimes have issues with it. Absolutely. And, and when they do get pregnant... They tend to not announce it until they're pretty far along and they're pretty sure. Right, and because of, you know, things that 
that sometimes happen and yeah. you know it, it can be very painful yeah. and you know so you don't know what somebody else is going through right you know and so this like i said when i saw this article it was kind of like oh yeah it's kind of you know yeah it, it hits hit home things. yeah it, hits it totally home. hits home yeah uh so as you had mentioned in our intro some lucifer news um so obviously that was one of my insightful picks a couple weeks ago um because it had been on the Fox network. It got canceled within a month. Netflix picked it up, picked it up for at least one season. Nobody really knew uh, where it was going, but Netflix actually came out and announced that they're going to do a fifth and final season. And I guess the, the show writers kind of, they were kind of ex expecting after season three on Fox that that was kind of the end of things. Right, right. And they were just very happy when, when Netflix picked them up. So they were able to kind of move the storyline along. And even the way that they ended, because I, I did finally, you know, finish uh, season four. And the way that they kind of finished it, you could have almost been like, all right, that's how it ends. Right, right. Uh, you know, happy ending-ish. Not really. Um so now it gives them a chance to really finish it how they want to. Um, so obviously the cast was very excited, you know, to to get the word because they hadn't really heard anything after the, the season came out, if they were going to be picked up, if it was done, um, because just because you're saved by Netflix for one season <laughs> doesn't right. mean you're going to be around forever, as we've seen with a couple of shows you know, that, that I've enjoyed that, you know, seem to be doing well. Now, and, is, is Netflix <laughs> ending it in the fifth season just because the story has no place else to go? Or is it a ratings issue? I don't think it's a rating issue. I think it, I think it was more the, the, the writers were like, you know, hey, you know what? We got saved more times than... Well, see, and that's the thing. Like, when you get saved after the one time, you couldn't end the show, and then you write the next season as though you're ending the show. Right. There's only so many times you can end, end the well, show in a and, season, and that was even, like, with Timeless. You know, that was a, another yeah. favorite of ours where that was in limbo well, timeless for... Timeless was like a zombie that kept coming back and <laughs> dying and coming back and You know, and, and it was like, all right, well, we're not... No, we're back again. We're not really sure we're going to die. Oh! We're back again. Okay, well. And then, and then what? The final was a TV movie they did. Right. The the TV movie. So the final season was just a two hour, right. you know, wrap up of everything. Um. So yeah. So it, it. You know. They. They. Again. They. Totally believe that the fans had everything to do, you know, with bringing it back, and so they kind of want to give, you know, give the characters a, a nice send off. So I thought that was kind of. Um, you know, kind of nice. Uh, the fourth season was a 10 episode season. Um, season five, they haven't given an episode, you know, count yet. So mm -hmm. it could be, you know, 10 could be a could little be bit a more. Shorter season, yeah. yeah. Just sum it up. Could be yeah. a television movie, too. Could be a television movie. But, you know, again, they were very, you know, excited to, to be able to play the characters all, you know, one last time. And in, obviously, Lucifer-related news, we had talked about Tom Ellis last week about him and his fiance um, requesting gifts right. for their wedding to be sent to uh, donations to be sent to Planned Parenthood. Right. Well, they actually got married over the weekend. So that's why they're not doing another <laughs> season, because he got married. Because he got married. Um, so they've been together for uh, about four years, and they tied the knot over the weekend. Um, and on Monday, they posted pictures, um, uh, you know, from the wedding. Um, they were sharing pictures of the, the gown beforehand and some jewelry and kind of some teasers over the weekend. And what was really sweet was um, all of the cast was actually at uh, the wedding. So the cast were posting videos and stuff on oh, social nice, media nice. you know from the wedding so it looked like a, a really fun time so the cast was there with their significant other so it was like you know one big you know uh college reunion-y type uh thing um ellis was actually previously married to um an actress who was on east enders um but their marriage actually ended in 2014 and they actually have 
uh, three daughters from uh, from that that wedding, and that was actually some of the pictures uh, that Tom had actually shared before the the wedding was you know spending time with my girls you know right. before the wedding weekend so wow. it was kind of three like, daughters <laughs> God bless them <laughs> you just have one <laughs> so we're so ha- happy to happy to hear uh, about that. Um, and other wedding news, uh, as you had mentioned, uh, Damian McGinty, who you might not know who he is. Uh, he, How he's... could you not know who he is? <laughs> Honey, not everybody is, is into Celtic Thunder. As but much he as was you... on Glee. <laughs> well, yes, and that. Um, so if you don't know the, the musical group um, Celtic Thunder, uh, Damien was actually... And maybe uh, you should. Maybe that's what I should have done. I should have made that my pick <laughs> this week. That should have been your pick of the week. Celtic Thunder. Irish drinking songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Our so, 12-year-old loves them. Yeah, she sure does. Um, so Damien actually started out as a as a singer as part of the group Celtic Thunder. Um, Celtic Thunder is almost like the Irish version of Menudo Menudo, in a way. Obviously not as young, um, but the... the, Rotating uh, through the Yeah, the the group, uh, you know, there were certain singers that came along and went on to do uh, other things. um, And then some people came back. So Damien happens to be one who he started out as a kid, um, got a little older, and he was actually on... It happens. Uh, he was actually, um, when Glee was on, they actually had a reality show called The Glee Project, right. which I was kind of a fan of because I was a very big fan of, of Glee. And he was a contestant on it, which I thought was just kind of funny. I was like, oh, my God, we know who he is. Um, so he actually didn't win the competition. He was one of the runner-ups from it. And what they did with the the couple of, uh, they actually did with a lot of the cast members from the Glee project was they actually got roles on Glee. So he was actually on um, on Glee for 18 episodes, the one one season as a recurring character. Um, he has a, a new album out. He just did a tour of the U.S. Uh, a couple of months ago, and he's been engaged um, to Anna Claire uh, Sneed, they started dating in April of 2014, and last weekend they got married in Memphis, Tennessee. So that was a, a nice that's, little. That's where all Irish people go to get married. Isn't <laughs> well, she's originally from there. <laughs> oh, that helps. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that is it on our entertainment news. Okay. And in. To you for your insightful pick, dear. So since we were talking about uh, Katrina Balf from Outlander, I figured might as well do Outlander as my insightful pick. Um, this was actually a show that I kind of found after, I think the first season had already aired. I heard people talking about it and was like, what, the, what is this show about? Um, so it's on the Stars Network. Um, but the first two seasons of Outlander are now available on Netflix. So I've actually been going back and re-watching because it's been a couple of years since um, since I saw the the first two seasons. Um, so and season five is actually gonna is already starting um, production right now. So um, if you get the Stars Network, you can probably see all four seasons of it. Um, I'm actually behind because we don't have stars anymore. Um, so I'm waiting to finally catch up on season four. Um, so the the idea of the show is that after serving as a British Army nurse in World War II, Claire Randall is enjoying a second honeymoon in Scotland with her husband, Frank, who is an officer in the Army as well. And looking forward to his career as an Oxford historian. So suddenly, Claire is transported to 1743 um, in some and into a mysterious world where her freedom and her life are threatened. To survive, she's forced to marry Jamie Fraser, a strapping Scots warrior with a complicated past and a disarming sense of humor. A passionate relationship ensues, and Claire is caught between two vastly different men in two various different lives. 
Um, it's actually a book series, which I started reading but just couldn't get into. But that's just because I have I have to like really be in the mindset to sit down and, and read. And because I had already watched the first two seasons, it was kind of hard to go spoiled back. <laughs> kind of spoiled the book for me. So m- maybe over the summer I'll, I'll get back into it. Um, so it, I think it has 55 episodes total in the four seasons. Um, so each episode is about an hour long. Um, not safe for kids. <laughs> it's definitely one that you want to make sure that the kids are uh, not around for. Not every episode is is unsafe, but better to be safe than, than sorry. Uh, very... Uh, Loving romantic story. Um, you get to see how, you know, Claire falls in love with Jamie, but how she also, you know, remembers her husband, you know, and and kind of goes back and forth, you know, between that, you know, that pulling at the heartstrings of, you know, but I'm still married to somebody else. He just hasn't been born yet. <laughs> how do I get back there in the inner turmoil? So... One of my favorite shows, you know, so it, it like I said, it, it's it's nice to go back and watch it. So if you've never watched it before, it is on Netflix. If you have Netflix, you can at least, you know, catch up on the first two episode, uh, first two seasons and hopefully uh, not much longer. The, the next two uh, seasons will show up. OK, cool. Good pick. Thank you. Mm hmm. So my pick this week, um, we're going with history <laughs> again. Uh, really? Documentary again. Would have never thought that. Um, you'd think listening to these that I'm boring, but I'm really not as boring as I come across. Uh, You're so a fun guy. This week is a show on National Geographic Channel. It's in a first its first season. Uh, it's about three episodes in right now. They're about an hour long. Okay. And it's called Making a Dictator. Mm. Uh, a growing threat to democracies appears in the face of dictatorships. Dictators like Adolf Hitler, Saddam Hussein, Augusto Pinochet, and Fidel Castro found their way to power through similar methods. Making a Dictator examines the brutal methods and common practices implemented by each dictatorship along with the ways in which they corrupted the countries they claim to improve. Mm. Um, what's interesting about the show is they each episode breaks down a different aspect of dictatorships. And they take the concept of a dictatorship and the personality associated with it, and they show that it's rather formulaic. You know? Okay. Every every dictator has these traits. Okay. Something and from column A, something exactly. from column B, something exactly. from column C. And they go into details and examples of how these uh, um, traits manifest themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's seizing power and you can seize power this way and you control the press or you you rule by fear or whatever it is. And they take you through step by step in each episode and they show you how various dictators um, basically employ these tactics. And some of them are, I mean, obviously the names I mentioned, there's some pretty brutal tactics oh, there. Oh, absolutely. Without even watching the show, I can only imagine yeah. what they're showing. The interesting thing is, is without saying it by name or directly mentioning it, there are frightening parallels between the... Dictators of history and just the ones of the 20th century, the Mm -hmm. dictators of the 20th century and a lot of the government administrations that we see today, Mm -hmm. Um, controlling the press, trying to discredit the press, Hmm. um, trying to come up with a, um, a credible fear that you could have people focus on so you can distract from other things. Gee, I don't know anyone like that. There's a lot <laughs> of things that these dictators have done that history knows that they've done. Right. That certain politicians today are continuing to do mm-hmm. in order to protect or prolong their corrupt governments. Right, right. Um, so it was very educational. 
and the episodes are, are, are very, I, I like to call it watchable. Okay. You know, it's one of those things where they, they postulate a theory and then they pull you into it when they give you the facts and the examples. Okay. And some of these episodes, when, when that episode is over, it leaves you scratching your head wondering, you know, hmm. just what direction the world's going in today. Right, right. And, and you know, it's my hope that uh, obviously other people have have learned from history. Mm-hmm. And it's my hope that the rest of society can learn from shows like this about our history, where we've been, where we're going. So that we don't repeat it. And how to correct our courses. Mm -hmm. So uh, National Geographic Channel, Making a Dictator. Uh, check your local times, local listings for time. Good pick. And the last thing we have is some afterthoughts. We have a couple of events that uh, are coming up, only one of which we're attending. Right. Uh, but, but the other we have attended in the past. The other we have. Um, I'll let you do our afterthoughts. Sure. So, uh, the like, like you were mentioning earlier, is normally we mention things after they've actually happened. So, unfortunately, if you're listening to our podcast... And you hear about it, you're like, oh, would have been nice if I knew about that a week or so ago. So I kind of, you know, thought, hey, these are things that are coming up. Let's talk about it beforehand. So one um, that we're not going to this year, but we have been in the past and have gone many times is Wizard World Philadelphia. Um, Wizard. <laughs> you just wanted to say that. Um, <laughs> it, it's your typical... You know, comic con, pop culture, pop culture it's, it's convention. It's not just comics. It's, it's not just comics. There's usually um, various uh, entertainment people from different movies and television shows. There's usually wrestlers. There's usually <laughs> it always cracks us up. That there's usually always some sort of Philly pop culture person. You Tony know, Luke. Tony Luke. You're like, why are you here? Yeah. Um, and hey. why are you here and not cooking cheese? <laughs> and then where are the cheesesteaks? Um, so yeah, that's something um, I've been going to Wizards a little bit longer than than you have. Um, I first went when I had a friend who was into comics, like, "Hey, you want to go?" And I was like, "All right, I guess so." I'm not really sure if I'm into anything, and it was a little bit more comicy in the beginning. Then they got into a lot of gaming stuff. Yep. Now there's a lot of cosplay. Um, there's different panels that you can, you know, go to. Various different celebrities with photo ops. Um, unfortunately for us, it's kind of, it's priced out for us. Um, you know, for what we go for and how much they charge now, for us, we just don't feel it's, it's yeah, a we decent, didn't, you know. Unless you go for the three or four days that it's there. Um, it's difficult to get into any of the panels. Right. Um, I, I am not a pay for celebrity signature type person. I, I don't, celebrities don't impress me enough to pay money to get right. them to sign a piece of paper or a picture. So we don't do that. Right. Uh, the gaming has been largely removed. We used to go for some of the Wizards of the Coast stuff that they had mm -hmm. there and right. we had some of the video game manufacturers there. That's sort of petered out. Right. Um, so we go basically to hit the vendors and, and buy stuff that you can't buy at your local right. store. Right, and, that, and that's obviously something that's a very big draw for a lot of people. You know, if you're looking for that hard-to-find Darth Vader or that hard-to-find Lego, or you know, the chances are you might find it there. Yep. Um, and then there are a lot of people that are into meeting, you know, celebrities and, and getting pictures with them and... You know, if that's your thing, this is definitely a, a chance, um, you know, for, for you to meet, you know, some of your idols. Right. Um, I, I have a couple of friends that they're very into it, that they look forward to going every year. And then I have other friends who go just because they enjoy dressing up, you know, and doing cosplay and seeing all the other, you know, characters yeah. and, and things like that. Um, we've kind of been staying away from it and doing more of the smaller, like we did the Greater Philadelphia Comic yep. Con, which 
we really enjoyed that one and we're looking forward to that one next year. It's a much smaller venue. We don't get as tired walking around and doing it in one day. Yeah, is, Wizards is, a, is much more mainstream and it's not on the same scale as like a New York Comic Con. Right, New York Comic Con. San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. It's, it's not on that scale. But it's a mainstream one. They do. Right. I think they're doing three cities these days. They're doing mm-hmm. Philly, Chicago, and I forget where the third city is. Yeah. LA, maybe I don't know. Yeah, and and back in the day, it used to just be the three days because we even did the one year we got a three day pass, yep. where we you know it was just the two of us on on Friday, kind of like a, a date day, and then Saturday and Sunday we you know we had the kids with us, um, you know, and and obviously if you can afford it and it's something that you want to do definitely do the multi-day because then you don't feel like you're rushing right. to do things you can spend a day doing um you can plan out panels you right can you can do panels the panels and, and yeah. if you do want to see celebrities you you know you're not standing in line the whole day just waiting you know to see one celebrity right. um you know back when our daughter liked dressing up you know we we dressed her up and she did the kids costume contest and yep. you know and and so that was fun the the one year you know things just kind of changed over the years so you know i have a, a friend at work who he goes every year um they usually get their tickets around christmas time because they come out and they're a little bit cheaper whereas now if you you wait to get them honestly i don't even know what were they going for 65 dollars, i think Something or, like that, yeah. yeah i don't i don't even because we kind of made the decision <laughs> you know between parking and tickets for three of us, you know, it just, you know. So when when is Wizard World? So Wizards is actually next weekend. So it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, June thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, and sixteenth, and it's at the Philadelphia uh, Convention Center in Philadelphia, um, in downtown Philly. There's plenty of parking uh, garages around. It's right across from, um, you know, Reading market. So there's plenty of places to eat. If you know, you happen to be in town and doing other things, you might even want to also two blocks away from Chinatown. too. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Um, so if, if it's, you know, something that you're interested in doing, that's definitely, uh, something, uh, that's for you. Um, and the other thing that is actually happening next Saturday that we are going to, um, is Raiders of the Lost Ark in concert. And it's going to be at the Man Center, which is in the outskirts of Philadelphia. Um, we actually went last year. They were showing Star Wars A New Hope in concert. Um, and it was really neat because you got to see the movie and they had a full orchestra uh, playing along yep. with the soundtrack. It's amazing. People don't really appreciate how much the music in these big blockbusters makes mm-hmm. the film. And you really understand that when you go and you you see these musicians mm-hmm. are literally playing the entire time of the movie right. with few exceptions. Right. And it and it was funny, like when we saw A New Hope, it was it was kind of funny, like, wow, I didn't realize how many scenes there were that there weren't any sort of music, right. you know, because there were times when all of a sudden they were kind of like, all right. Right. <laughs> You know, and then there were other times when the cantina scene <laughs> that disappointed me. I was hoping for we the, were so the, hoping the, the for that. Um, so th- they do a couple of uh, movies throughout the year. Um, they actually had mentioned when we saw A New Hope that for this season they were going to be doing Empire Strikes Back, which we have tickets for already, which I believe is in August. Uh, it's either July or August. I don't remember the right at the hottest part of the season. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is if you've never been to the man, it's an outdoor theater, <laughs> so it's yeah. really hot. <laughs> um, so bring fans. Bring a fan. Um, yeah. But Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, the symphony, uh, the orchestra that's actually going to be playing is the the Reading Symphony Orchestra. Um, I'm sure tickets are still available. They do have uh, lawn seats. And they're very, they're very reasonable tickets. Yeah, too. they they weren't that bad. Um, so it's actually June fifteenth, next Saturday at eight p.m. If you do get there early, they have different food trucks there. Um, I think they let you in 
two hours before, maybe two or Something three hours long before. Long enough that we could have a sit down dinner. Right. They actually have a, an area where you could do like a sit down buffet dinner. We kind of just happened upon that. So we had dinner, but they had other various things um, available for eating. They had plenty of lawn seats. Now, the one thing with the lawn seats, if you've ever gone to uh, any kind of uh, outdoor venue that has lawn seats, most of them, uh, it, it's kind of, you know, pitched. So if you're sitting at the top, you can still kind of see down. What I did notice with the man was that it was a very hilly. Yeah. And a lot of times in the lawn seats, you couldn't actually really see, but they did have big screen. Right. They had external you know, screens off of the mainstream all... because the way they do the concert is the movies projected on a screen behind the orchestra. Right, right. And then the orchestra is in front of the screen when you're inside the uh, enclosure of the, right. of the venue. But the, the stadium seating or the, the lawn seating is outside, but outside the venue, they do have large screens on either side. Right. Of the so, venue, you, so you're, you you're probably, you know, so if you were looking to get lawn seats, just know if you've, again, if you've never been to the man, because this was our, our first time and we actually did have seats. So we, right. yeah. you know, we didn't have to really worry about it. But if you're sitting, you know, in lawn seats, chances are you're not going to actually be able to see the awkward orchestra from where you are but it is going to be projected with the movie and you know you'll see you know the orchestra and right. and hear them as well so again that's uh coming up next saturday and and pro tip if you do go use the restroom before <laughs> before intermission, intermission. <laughs> yeah unfortunately yeah when when we uh when we went to intermission we waited pretty much all of intermission yeah. just to uh use the restroom so yes yep. If you think the intermission's coming, get up and just run. <laughs> yep. Yep. Don't wait. <laughs> Don't wait. <laughs> all right. I think that's all for this week. That mm -hmm. was a busy one. Sure was. Uh, another great podcast. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back next week with another one. All right. Have a great one, guys. Take care.